वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स वी वेर स्टडिंग पेज रिप्लेसमेंट एलगोरिदम we will refresh the page replacement algorithms and study the last section of unit 4 thrashing okay so we have seen page replacement algorithms there are three page replacement algorithms the fifo replace replacement uh, replacement algorithm lifo page replacement uh, lifo that is least used uh, page to be replaced and then we have the optimal so let's uh, rewrite the string and do all the three page replacement algorithm so the page string i am writing it down so these are the pages so we will take up page uh, we will take three pa uh, three frames uh, set so let's take three frames so seven is not there so we will get the frame page seven into frame one then frame in frame one we get zero in frame three we get one so now all the three frames are full and we need to reference page 2 where to get page 2 in these three frames we are only having three frames and all the three frames are full so we have to replace the page with the algorithm fifo fifo is first in first out so remove the first page out and replace the requested page into that frame so the first page that was brought in was 7 so replace it with 7 0 is present so no need of page replacement then 3 is required now who is uh, the one which came the first 0 so replace that next we want 0 again so let's bring 0 so now which is the oldest oldest of 3 is 1 so remove that then we need 4 so 4 has to be brought in who is the oldest 2 is the oldest so replace that with 2 again we need 2 replace it with 3 because 3 is repeated thrice right so 4 2 and 0 then we need 3 3 who is the holders 0 so replace that now we need 0 so replace again of the frame first frame with 4 the page 4 with 0 because this is the oldest then 3 is present no need of page replacement 2 0 is there no need of page replacement 2 is there no need of page replacement 1 is required which is not there in this set so we need to get that who is the oldest 3 has come twice 2 has come thrice and 0 has come once so 2 is the oldest so remove 2 so 0 1 and 3 now 2 is again required so replace the, the oldest page the oldest page is 3 so replace it with 3 then 0 is needed 0 is present 1 is needed 1 is present no page replacement is required for 0 and 1 because they are already present in the frame next 7 7 is required in the frame and there is uh, the oldest one is 0 so replace it with 0 now again zero is required so replace one is the oldest so replace it with one now again one is needed bring one back so we'll get 7 0 and 1 because two is the oldest frame page so this is first in first out so how many place replacements we had to do 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 and 15 total number of page faults 
that occurred were 15. So this is uh, FIFO. Next, let's go to uh, optimal. In optimal, we have to replace a page in the frame based on which will not be used in the least in the nearest future. We have to see the future. Till now we were seeing the past. Now we will see the future, which is a page that will not be used in the near future. That page will be removed, will be swapped out and the requested page will be swapped in. So let's start. So first, 7 is required, we put in 7, 0 is required, so put 0, and then 1 is required, put 1. So this is full now, we require 2. So we'll have to see out of these 3, which is the one which is not be required in the near future. So see in this direction. See in this direction, the these, out of these three numbers, whichever you find the farthest, you will have to select that for replacement. So 7. 7 is available here. 0 is available here only and 1 is available before 7. So which number, which of these three pages will not be used in your future? 7. So replace 7 with 2. Okay, next 0. 0 is already present, no need of page replacement. 3 is required, replace the page with some page which is not going to be used in near future. So 2, 2 is going to be used in near future, 0 is going to use, be used in the next reference only. 1 is the one which is going to, not going to be used in the near future, so replace it with 1. So 2 is required, 0 is required, 1 is not required in near future, so replace 3 with 1. Next, 0 is present, so no need of page replacement. Next, 4 is required. See which of these 3 is not going to be used in your future. 2 is going to be used next. 0 is going to be used next. 3 is also going to be used next. But out of 0, 2 and 3, who is, going, who is the last being referenced? 0. So replace it with 0. So we have 2, 4 and 3. So 2 and 3 are already present, no need of page replacement. Next we have to get in 0. So which page we have to remove? Check and tell which page has to be removed. 4 is the one which is not going to be referenced only in the future. So remove 4. So what you will get? 2, 0 and 3. Next 3 is there, no need of replacement, 0 is there, no need of replacement, 2 is there, no need of replacement, 1 is required, so replace a page with 1. 3 is not going to be used in future, so we will replace it with 3, 2, 0, 1. 2 is there, 0 is there, 1 is there, now we need 7, which of these 3 numbers is not going to be used? After 7, 0 and 1 is required, 2 is not required, so we will replace it with 2. 7, 0, 1. 0 and 1 are already there. No need of page replacement. So how many page replacements we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. Total number of pages that we had a page fault are 9. Next. going to use least recently used. So this is the algorithm. In this, what we are going to see is we are going to see in the past. In the past which frames were not used in a recent time, we are going to replace with that page. So first we will start with three frames. So seven is required, put seven. Then 
zero is required put zero then one is required put one then two is required now we we'll have to see in this direction which is farther that page you have to remove so in all of these three seven is the one which is not recently used zero are one which are more recently used than seven so replace two with seven next we require zero zero is there then we require three out of these three which is the one which is not used in the near future which which was not got in the near future so two is got here only zero is just before only one is the one which is farer than zero and one zero and two so one is the one which is not used in the near future in the near time we in in the in the near past so we have to replace that so two will be there zero will be there and instead of one we will have three okay next zero is present no need of replacement four is needed we have to replace so out of these three which is a page that was not used in the near past so three was used here only zero was used three was used zero was used two is the one which is farther so replace four with two now two is required again so which was the one which is not recently used you replace that so three is the one which is zero and four are recently used three was the one which is far so replace it with that now again three is required so we'll have to again bring back three so out of these which is the one which is not used in near future which was not used in the near past sorry so it is zero so four three and two next zero is required which will remove will remove four because two and three are here only so four is the one which is far so we'll have to replace with four three is present zero is present two is present okay so no need of page there will be no page fault here so one is required one is not there in the frame so we have to bring it in so which one will you replace two is recently used zero is recently used three is the not the recently used so we have to replace with three so you'll get zero one and two okay then two is present zero is present one is present so no page replacements required so seven which one you will remove two is the oldest right in the near future uh, in the near present two was not used so two has to be replaced so zero one and seven zero and one are already present so how many page faults you will have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 44 45 46 47 48 49 
so this one was asked first so supposing if this one was asked at time 0 minutes 0 millisecond this was asked at third millisecond and one was asked at four millisecond how will you know which was the one which was not used in the near future the one which is having the least time least clock time is the one which was least used in the near future this was recently used this was recently used and this is the one which is the oldest that is uh the one that is you not used in the re recent time so the page that we have to re uh, replace is 7 so this is how the computer calculates which page has to be replaced for lru so when a page needs to be changed to look at the counters to find smallest value so out of c which is the smallest zero is the smallest so find that smallest value and replace the page that is required with this page so search through the table needed okay stack implementation can be done keep a stack of a page number in a double linked list form so use a double linked list and keep that pages in a stack whenever a page is referenced move it to the top so which page is referenced you move that page to the top now supposing here if i have to take this example so 7 is uh, required first so we put 7 then 0 then 1 Then two is required. We put that two. Then uh, again zero is required. So zero was down. Now bring it to the top. So put zero on top here and put two down. So uh, that way we will get it to the top of the stack. So this way, whichever is at the top of the stack, it means that it is recently used. The one which is there at the bottom, it means that it is a, which is the one which is not used from in the recent time. so that way we can use a single link list a double link list to move the page to the top and require six pointers to be changed so there are uh, pointer changes that will be required in this case so we will have to do six pointer changes but each update moves is more expensive here so this will be more expensive as compared to this because we are keeping the clock bit information and this uh, is storing and we have to just search searching is more effective than updating the link so this is more efficient than having a link list for storing the listing so no page uh, no search for player replacement is required in this case search is required and in this case search is not required directly you go to the bottom of the stack and remove that element that page from the list and put at the top the latest page that is required so lru and optimal are cases of stack algorithms that don't have a uh, baldis anomaly so what is baldis anomaly you'll remember that i told you that as the page fault increases uh, i'll just show you the diagram the graph so here you see number of frames increase the page uh, rip number of page faults uh, can be can increase or decrease so here even the frame was 3 it decreased but when we made the frames as 4 it increased the page faults increase so not necessary that when the number of frames you increase that the page fault decrease the page fault can increase as well that is called as baldis anomaly and that is not present in lru and optimal when you are using stack algorithms using stack data structures next heading is thrashing so this is the last concept of unit 4 here we complete unit 4 so what is thrashing thrashing is a a, a process by in, in which the cpu is wasting its time in only swapping in and swapping out when the number of page faults are so much that uh, i'll give you an example processes in the ram and they have certain frames and these frames are not enough for one process supposing in the ram you have this is operating system you have a uh, frame of uh, i'll make frame it as 1 2 3 4 5 6 
and this is process 1 this is given to process 2 uh, this is given to process 1 this is given to process 2 this is process 1 this is process 1 okay so two frames are given to process 2 and three or four frames are given to process 1 now process 2 is having less frames so whenever it requires another frame to uh, reference another page it will try to remove one frame it will ask the operating system for a frame it will say that this page is not present so a page fault occurs operating system trap happens it checks that page on the secondary storage device brings that page into the ram by making one of the frame empty so in this case it's not necessary that the process which is requesting for the page that process frame only will be evacuated so this page of p2 process p2 and this page of process p2 these two are p2 process and p2 is requesting so not necessary operating system will evacuate any of these two pages and bring that page 3 of process 2 no here it can remove any of them because it's a global operating system is taking care of replacing the pages it's not the process so operating system can remove p1 process page also p2 process page also so we are not sure whether p1 process page will be removed or p2 process page will be removed supposing now p1 will be replaced so p1 is replaced and in this place p2 is put then again p2 requires another page so this also will make it p2 so now p1 requires page what will happen p1 also will request for a page so in this way p1 will also request page it may replace it then again p2 p1 may require so it will take the p2 page then again p2 page so in this way what happens the two process will only go into page fault so they will be more into the paging device queue than in the ready queue or in the execution process so this system this uh, scenario where the process is only doing thrashing when doing page request page faults it is generating page faults continuously and not in executing any instruction the page that it requires next is removed from the memory and another page is placed and then again when that is required that is loaded so in this way a one instruction requires uh, simultaneously it is continuously doing page faults then that kind of a scenario is called as thrashing so what it says is if a process does not have enough pages if the process does not have enough pages in the main memory the page fault rate is very high so in this case as the page fault increases the operating system is going in from one process to is shifting from one process to another process to see if it can execute another process that process also goes into page fault so as the processes are going into page fault the cpu is sitting idle doing nothing but to take care of is but it is waiting for the page fault to uh, the page to be brought into the main memory so this scenario the multi degree operating system thinks that the cpu utilization is decreased and hence it tries to bring more process so since these two are fighting for frames then it cpu is not utilized it operating system thinks that the operating system is not having any work and hence it tries to bring another process into the waiting process into the system to increase the degree of multi programming but by bringing another program that program also will start fighting for the main memory space so this situation is called as thrashing so this leads to low cpu utilization operating system thinks that it needs to increase the degree of multi programming another process is added to the system so as you increase the number of processes the memory again is limited it is reduced it is distributed among the processes again there will be less memory among the processes and they will start killing each other page removing each other page so that is called as thrashing so this is what this diagram will explain you completely so as you increase the degree of multi programming the cpu utilization increases but to one level after one level the cpu utilization decreases why though the degree of multi programming is increased more number of processes are there in your system active but what is happening is they are only doing page fault hence cpu is not having any work so it, its utilization decreases so uh, cpu utilization is here decreasing and it comes down to zero because all processes are in waiting queue of the paging device than the ready queue so that is why it is called as thrashing 
so demand paging and crashing so what how we can solve this problem we can solve this problem by using demand paging so uh, we have to take care that the process don't take up other process space the frames that are allocated to other process so if i have a process page table so let's take process p1 and process p2 and their page tables 0 1 2 3 4 supposing if this is in frame 8 6 4 5 2 1 okay so these are the frames that are used by these two processes so now uh, when a page is required supposing if there are more than four pages here p2 is having 10 pages and p1 is having eight pages when it requires see how many pages are there in the main memory only 0 to 4 are there in the main memory supposing if it requires fifth page the fifth page has to be brought into the main memory means it has to have an empty frame supposing if there is an empty frame then that frame can be allocated if there are no empty frame p1 cannot it, it will have to remove only the, the operating system has to remove a page from p1 uh, holding and get the new page in that location means it has to replace any of these pages only it should not replace p2 pages when fifth page of p1 is required it should replace any of these pages and not the p2 pages see that is what we call it as locality of model locality model locality model means what we can consider this locality increases and decreases how does it increase and decrease supposing if i have i'll explain it with functions supposing there is main function then there is function 1 then there is function 2 so when the process is executing in its main memory it does not require function 1 and function 2 and to be in the main memory but when the main calls function 1 then what happens main also is there in the main memory and function 1 also has to be brought into the main memory for execution so the process p1 this process will increase its locality so this is one locality this is another locality these localities can overlap means what the the page which is not necessary they are functions it can be page also and this pages that is required by main and pages that are required by function 1 may be overlapping means the content that they require the data structures the, the things that they require they may be shared among these two locality so we may have overlapping locality so that is what is called as locality so every page is called as locality so if there is a function then that function will have a set of pages another function it will have its own set of pages then there may be some pages that are common to both the functions like your global data and all so that we call it as overlapping of locality okay so a uh, process migrates from one locality to another so from main it will come to main function 1 from function 1 it can come to function 2 from function 2 it can finish and go back to function 1 and then again go back to main so these two are not required remove them so the, the process will be migrating from one locality to another locality from one page it can go to another page so that is what locality uh, From migrating from one locality to another locality, localities may overlap. So, what do you mean by localities may overlap? 
the pages that are required by one locality may also be required by another locality so if there is overlapping of the locality so why does thrashing occur so if summation consider summation size of locality is there so if there are n uh, locality then the total memory size that is required so say if there are n pages in a locality and if the number of pages re uh, required by that we come to know first only and we give that then there will be no thrashing because whatever pages that locality requires all they are there in the main memory but if the demand of pages is 10 and you only supply 5 frames are you understanding number of pages required by the locality are 10 and the number of page frames that you allocate in the main memory are only 5 so it will have it will have less frames required it is allocated less frames than it is required so it will cause a thrashing it will always ask for more pages and then it, the page that it requires also will be replaced so hence there will be thrashing so limit effects by using local and priority page replacement so you can use a lo local and priority page replacement to avoid this, this thing so this is a diagram which shows the execution time so if in so much execution time this is the amount of uh, memory addresses or pages that are required so in this case there will be a uh, locality in a memory reference pattern so here you can have a, a reference seeing how many pages which pages are used so in this amount of time these pages are used and those pages are used middle two pages are not used here these pages are not used here again these pages are used these pages are not used so in this way you can come to know which pages are required when can you see so in some of most of in some of the localities some of the execution time some pages are always used so that is what is locality of reference so we can use a working set model to solve the problem of thrashing so we should reduce the number of thrashing so what happens in thrashing is a, a process can if it is a uh, removing if it requires pages and if it's only uh, removing the pages of its locality only it it uh, the thing can affect thrashing can happen only for that process but <coughs> excuse me but if uh, a process goes into a, a paging device queue and if there are more processes coming to the paging device queue for page faults to a service page fault the average service time of a page fault increases because there is average page fault service time increase other processes also will be affected and they will also go into page fault so if one page also is required by another process then that process has to come into wait on the same paging device waiting queue and because there are already some processes waiting this process also goes into the uh, thrashing so uh, how do we solve this problem we can solve this problem by using a working set window we consider delta is equal to working set window which is equal to a fixed number of page references so you are providing it a fixed number of page reference that it will be using so you will see in this period it's a period that you take and you will say in this period what all pages it will require so how many pages it will require that many frames you can allocate to it and hence you can avoid thrashing so number of pages that it requires initially when it starts uh, its locality that time it will go on asking for new frames to uh, load all its pages when all the pages of that locality are loaded then it will not have uh, it will not ask for a page fault it will stop asking for page fault it may just ask for one or two pages extra so that is what can be managed it cannot if the page faults increase very high then there will be thrashing so what we see here is the working set size wws is working set size so select the working set size we equals to we will take for example of 100 instructions and we say that working set for of process pi is equal to total number of page reference in the most recent delta varies in time so the delta is the time period, the small time, delta is small time. So small time is in nanoseconds or in milliseconds. So if delta is too small, will not encompass entire locality. So if you give it, that's what I said, if a locality requires 10 frames and you are giving it only 5 frames in the main memory, then you are giving it very less frames, hence it will not be able to 
accommodate all its pages into the frames allocated to it and it will not be able to finish its execution so there will be crashing problem there will be page faults regularly but if you give it uh, too large supposing if it requires 10 and you give it 12 frames it requires if the locality demands for the particular function or a section of the process requires 10 pages and you allocate it 12 pages what happens it has some extra space also that it can utilize and run how required so on an average it requires 10 pages but if it requires more than 10 pages at a time at any given time then it can accommodate in that one or two frames that it has extra so it will uh, uh, and the entire process can be put into the if delta is great is equal to infinity will encompass entire program if delta is too large it can em encompass several localities so if you give it more space then it will able to load more than one locality if you give it infinity amount of frames then it can have the entire program can be loaded into the RAM. so t is equals to summation of wssi which is equal to total demand frames so we add how much it requires for all the given working set sizes for all its locality how much required size how much demand it has how much price demand it has we keep it as d approximation of locality this is calculated as approximation how much it may require okay so if d is greater than m m is the number of frames that you are providing it so if d is greater than m then there is crashing uh, if the, the uh, approximate pages that it requires is more than the number of frames then it is crashing policy is if d is greater than m then the suspended or swapped out one of the process uh, page re page replacement table uh, so if your number of the demand is uh, uh, high and number of pages that you are allocated is less then what will happen there will be less uh, demand is more than the allocated pro pro m is nothing but the number of frames that you have allocated and d is the demand that it is having that the process has so if the d is greater than m that means the pages that are required by the process is more and the number of pages that you have allocated to that process is less so in that case one of the process which is other process you will have to remove that process suspend that process of execution remove it from the main memory and give this process the amount of pages that it requires so that it finishes its execution once it finishes the execution the suspended process can brought can be brought back into the memory and made to execute so in this way we will try to avoid crashing so here there is an example ws the uh, working set at time t1 is equal to so at this particular time interval these are the a reference string this is a reference string these are the pages that are required so in 10 uh, if you consider 10 uh, size if delta is equal to 10 so in 10 frames this is in 10 milliseconds this is the number of pages that it will be using so these are the total pages that it requires so 1 2 3 4 5 5 frames it will require but in this case if in the same amount of time it is only referencing 3 4 so 3 and 4 only 2 frames it will pages it is re frequently re referencing so it doesn't require 5 frames it requires only 2 frames so that is what we are trying to tell so if the number of if the demand d this is demand demand d is 2 and number of frames is uh, how much you allocate 5 or 2 so based on that the thrashing can occur or not occur so what we do is approximate with interval timer and a reference bit so what we do is we have a ref reference uh, timer we keep a interval time that from this time to this time of this process if this is the di demand that it will show then we can have a reference bit set to it use a reference bit this reference bit is that if page one was asked then set its bit request bit to one if the bit if the page was not requested make its bit off so if the page was referenced make its bit on if the page is not requested then make its bit off so based on which bits are on you will come to know that these are the pages that it will be using and whichever bits are off it means that these pages will not be asked will not be referenced so based on that you all can decide how many frames to allocate to this process so that there will be no thrashing 
So example, if delta is equal to 10,000, timer interrupts after every 5,000 minute units. So after every 5,000, if 10,000 is a delta, then after every 5,000 you will interrupt and you will see, uh, keep in memory two bits for each page. So for every page you use two bits to indicate whether it has reference or it was not reference. So whenever a timer interrupts, copy and set the value of all reference bits to zero. So whenever the time is interrupted, make the, uh, uh, the reference bits as zero. Reset the reference bits so that you check on the next reference in the next time period which are the pages that it will request for. So if one of the bits in memory is equal to one, it means that that page is in working set. So you put that page into the working set. If it, if any of the bit was, ref, if any of the page was referenced, then its bit is made on. So if the bit is made on, it means that this page is a working set. So put it into the working set uh, set uh, list so that you can count how many pages for what pages, what are the number of pages that required for how many frames you have to allocate to it. So this not this model is not completely accurate. Why it is not completely accurate? Because it may happen that this time period a page may not be referenced. It may be referenced in the previous time period. So you need to keep also the frequency. How many how many times this is requested? So that also can be done, and you can have three bits. So you can have ten bits and interrupt every thousand mill time units. So this can help you all to solve the problem more appropriately. So more direct approach than WWS is page fault frequency. Best solution is the page fault frequency instead of using the bits and all to and uh, this thing because that is so complicated, right? To keep a track of that. Instead of that, what you do is every time a page fault occurs, you see what page fault has occurred, record that page fault, which page has uh, made a page fault, which for which page you'll have got a page fault trap. So record that and uh, you establish acceptable page fault frequency. So you keep a page fault frequency, how much page fault you are going to accept. So you can have a lower bond and an upper bond uh, set for it and see here, upper bond and lower bond. If the page fault, number of page fault at a given time goes beyond the lower bond, that means the number of frames that you have allocated to that process is more than it requires. So you can remove those frames and give it to another. You can take the frames back from this process and give it to another process. If the uh, number of page faults goes higher than the upper bond, then the number of frames that you have allocated to this process is less than what it requires. So allocate more frames to it. So in this way, what you are doing is you are trying to solve the problem of trashing. So if at that particular time, if it requires more frames, give it more frames. If it requires less, frames then the lower bond then remove those many frames from it and allocate it to another process. So in this way you will not have a fixed number of frames that you are allocating to every process. This may cause thrashing. So keep it dynamic. When the number of page faults increase, increase the number of frames. When the number of page fault decreases then the lower bond decrease the number of frames required. So working set and page rate. So in this way, if you make a work, working set and you allocate the frames, so there will be a direct relationship between the working set of a process and its page fault rate. So if you see, at this is the working set. In this working set, at the beginning, the page fault will be more. Once it gets all its pages, then the number of page faults, if you see these peaks, they are less. So in only in the in every page frame, working set frame, only once there is a peak. Otherwise, there is a lower rate of page faults. So that is what will happen if you'll have a page fault, uh, 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 page fault frequency if you'll use to set up uh, lower bond and upper bond and allocated frames based on how much it requires in, if it goes above higher bond, upper bond, allocated frames, if it goes lower, uh, uh, the, uh, less than the lower bond, page, rate, page fault rate goes lower than the uh, lower bond. If it goes decreases uh, than the lower bond, then decrease the number of frames. So in that way, you can see here, at the beginning it will require more. Once you set, give it that many frames, then its page fault will not be high. The rate of page fault will be low. So that finishes your 
chapter 8 which is virtual memory management which is unit 4 and then we will start with unit 5. In unit 5 we are going to talk about files and directories. What are the file storage techniques? What, how you do it? You have various techniques of storing your files, uh, of arranging your files on your secondary storage device and you have disk seeking algorithm means how to search for a particular file, how your uh, the thing, best way to access your, uh, to move your disk to reach the particular location and access multiple disk locations in a best and economical way. So we will see all that in the